Okay, well, we're gonna start taking apart the Strix today. Uh, this is a Strix 3090. I'm gonna take it apart and then we're gonna block it with the 3090 uh, EK block. Uh, right off the bat, we're gonna start from the rear. Uh, this will not void your warranty, breaking this little dot screw here. Okay, my flip side's a little large. So do not be concerned. You cannot void your warranty by breaking this sticker. At least in the US you can't. So I like to keep my screws in a little Ziploc bag right away. There's generally for Seuss cards, only two to three different types of screws. So you don't necessarily need to put them on a diagram. Just have a general idea. It helps if you take pictures along the way. Um, if you didn't take photos, you can always watch a video like this and see how it goes back together, right? Okay, these actually are retained by springs, so I'm not gonna bother with that. Uh, I remember this has to come off. I've done this once before, so this is not completely new territory. This actually comes off in general. If you don't want to use this and you don't want the branding, I'll put the screws right away to the bag. Then if I recall correctly, the cooler is actually only retained by six screws. Uh, one, two, three, four, and then five and six. So take these off. This is actually not the spring-loaded screw. The cooler retention ones are always spring-loaded. Not spring-loaded, but there's a spring attached to them. So put that in the baggie. All right, now it's time to just gently separate. Uh, it, you're gonna have some tension. That's mainly, actually, you know what? You might wanna check around up here. Sometimes there are additional screws here. I do not believe any of the cooler ones are attached to here. It's the mid, it's that middle heat sink plate. That's still caught, see? There you go, it's come apart, right? But at this point, you wanna be careful because usually the fans, their wiring is attached to the PCB. So as I open this, you can see that there is a wire. I don't know how well it's gonna show on camera, but there's a wire right here. And you need to pull that wire out. And there's another one right here, right? So I'm just going to gently unplug this wire. Okay, and then we come out. And there is another wire over here. So gently. Okay, and there's the main coolers off. You can see the thermal paste job, not too shabby. Uh, these pads tend to break, um, especially sometimes they're just slightly dried out or, yeah, usually if they're a little dry, I find them on Asus cards, they're not perfect contact, I guess. And you can see that wasn't exactly perfect either when I assembled it. Not a bad paste job, not excessive like it used to be. Um, at this point, you're gonna need to remove this frame. This frame is attached at multiple points on the back plate, actually. The screws are all on the back plate, not these, but these I hear and on the IO. So we're gonna start by removing the ones on the IO bracket. There's one right here. You can actually see it. You can see where it comes together. So I'm gonna just start popping these out. There's one, one more. Then this one as well. Not all of them secure the mid plate, but you can tell just by eyeballing it which ones do. Actually, I removed them and this one actually doesn't connect, so I'm gonna put this one back. Even though I've done this before, sometimes I don't remember it exactly. So, and then these two over here on the side. Then we're just gonna take a look at where else. All right, so 
put their screws away in the bag the moment you take them out. You never know, you knock them and they're extremely hard to find because they're very small. So, these are long. These, I don't know if you can tell on camera, these are actually longer. Uh, they actually go from the back plate through the mid plate. Also helps to have a magnetic screwdriver. Otherwise, you're gonna have a lot of fun chasing up the small screws. Okay. Got two breaks there. Yep, two breaks. Okay, is this correct? I guess some of these little burrs are also part of it. Let's see. Wow. Actually, all of them this time. You know, I don't remember having these to take these off on the Strix 80 that I bought. So surprising. These are actually uh, are these hex heads? Yeah. Right. So, and there you go. See, comes off right away. Um, there's also a DRM pad down here. Screws in the bag. Now we just have to get the factory back plate off. If you have, say, a barrel water block, uh, that actually uses the factory back plate. So you can keep it on. But for the bits hard blocks, I'm pretty sure the Aqua computer as well in EK, you're going to have to remove the back plate, which I don't think is held on anything more now but thermal pads. So gently, always gently. There's definitely pads on the back, especially for the 90s. So you gotta be, there's more VRAM on the back. This is not coming. Yeah, this is not coming off nicely. I'm gonna do this a little bit off camera so I can see better. Okay. Okay, I take that off camera because I want to be able to see better. But there you go. See, there's a lot of pads on the back for a 90. So you're gonna have to be careful. Um, do not force this when you take this off. Uh, the pads are sticky, so be careful. Okay, so there's the entire cooler off. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. Um, still a remaining pad that's dried and stuck on. A little bit dry, okay. So I'm gonna clean this up and then we're gonna come back, take a look at the block and we'll continue. Uh, this is the block itself. Uh, pretty nicely done. Uh, clear terminal this time. Sometimes it's acetyl. I guess now they're just going with clear. Uh, used to be a two piece, right? Last generation, I remember some of them. I think this generation, some of them are still two piece. Uh, not sure why the Strix is a one piece, but that's that RGB. RGB mandatory. Uh, usually this can go right into the card. I think the Strix, Strix I, they used to have the RGB header, probably not anymore. At least I don't see it on the PCB. Let's take a look. Let's see, I don't see it on here, just fan headers this generation. So this wire's gonna have to go into the motherboard if you care for it. Um, I might not actually use it. In the box, you also get uh, a hex, hex tool, uh, which I don't see you using for this purpose unless it's meant for the you know, stop caps. Uh, you get a bag of screws. You're not gonna use all of these. I think you shouldn't, since they went with this uh, basic kind of screw bag. Uh, you get <clears throat> thermal pads, all one millimeter, looks to be. So we're also gonna do a back plate today. And that's right here. You get a huge bag of thermal pads, sorted sizes in this one. So we're gonna have to pay attention. 
Uh, these days you can go online to the EK website and get the instruction manual. It actually tells you how to take off the cooler, uh, generally, uh, not as detailed as I just showed you guys, but you can get a general idea of what you need to do. If it's your first time doing a water block, it doesn't hurt to read through it. I only printed parts of it because I found some of it unnecessary to go through. Uh, so first thing we're gonna do obviously is put the pads on the block itself. As you can see here, it shows one millimeter, all one millimeter. And the highlighted areas are where we're gonna put it. So it's just a matter of cutting pads and putting them in the right spots. Uh, I don't clean the surrounding dye area that well because it's no purpose. But if you have OCD, then by all means go for it. I'm going to now cut the pads into place and I will come back once I have the pads in place. Um, I also just cut it generally. I don't, I don't cut it exact either. You guys will see. Okay, so I've gotten the thermal pads on. This is probably the most lengthy part of the process. Um, they're rough cut and not precise. For these, for example, you could potentially just put a whole strip here. If you don't know if you should have a pad somewhere, for example, on these components right here, you can always look at the water block and look at the cooler. So if the stock cooler had a VRM pad that touches around here, then you would need one there, okay? So not VRM, I'm just thermal pad. You can also look at the block. Uh, anywhere where the block is raised is you normally where a thermal pad would go. So for example, on the memory chips right here, you can see it's raised on the block. Therefore, a pad would definitely go there. Um, ideally, this shouldn't be metal on metal contact for a lot of stuff. Um, also, if you, for example, here in the instructions here, it shows that you should have a thermal pad here. When they get mm, the instructions to make, when they get the basic PCB design to make the water block, uh, this design does change. So while there are solder points here, there's actually no component here. Uh, also, uh, for some of the Strix blocks, these caps have changed in height. So if you have aqua computer block, uh, or you have, I think it's Aqua Computer, maybe some of the others, I'm not too sure off the top of my head. Uh, make sure that you have clearance here on these caps. Uh, these caps are only on the 3090s. They don't exist on the 80s. So on the EK block, there's actually cutouts for these caps. So if you're not careful, you can crush those caps. And if you crush those caps, you're gonna have to replace those caps. And if you're a beginner, uh, that's not gonna be fun for you. For most people, they're not gonna, just know how to easily replace craps on their uh, GPU. So I'm just gonna use Thermal Grizzly. Um, you can use whatever you want. Uh, I find this stuff, it's a bit runny, but works out for me. Uh, excess, it's not excessive, a little more than a P. At this point, I like to line up the block. And since we're doing a back plate, I'm not going to bolt it down right away. And so we're just gonna drop it on. It should fit very snug. Some people like to remove the block to check for contact, but that also picks up all the pads. I'm just gonna look down the sides and see where things line up where they're supposed to be. Seeing that, making sure nothing is touching or it's not supposed to touch. For example, when you see down these slits, you can actually see that the thermal pad is resting on where it's supposed to be. Sometimes it does move when you move the block around. And there are parts where you figured maybe there should be a thermal pad here. You can actually see when you look through it that if you need the thermal pad there or not because it doesn't come in contact with the block. So now that we got the back lined up, just got it on the box. So this way, power plate doesn't get in the way. Um, on the instructions, you can see that it tells you to use the washer and the screw. Since we're doing a back plate, you're not gonna put in the screw in the screws that where the back plate holes would be. So just had a quick reference. First thing, I'm just gonna empty this bag with the screws here. And I noticed there are some different sizes. Generally speaking, it says to use the M2.5 by four millimeter. That looks to be about this screw right here. All right, I think you can see that. Uh, you're gonna wanna put the washer over it. Just put these screws on. Okay, so what I've done here is put on these screws right here. All of these and here. These I left open because that's where the back plate is gonna go. So I always talk about the screws on the back plate. 
That's why I didn't screw those in yet. Um, at this point, I would say pay attention to uh, PCB flex. Do not tighten these screws excessively when you go around. Do them kind of loose and then tighten them in after you get everything lined up. If you put too much pressure, you will bend this PCB sometimes. Or if you put the thermal pads wrong, the PCB will flex. You can see here there's some slight flexing, uh, but normally okay. So the very, very minor flexing. Um, but yeah, if, if you did something wrong, you, you're going to notice if you put the pads wrong, the PCB is not going to sit right. It's going to flex. So I'm going to just clean the VRM, uh, sorry, not VRM, the memory chips here clean up. And then I'm going to pad those followed by the instructions. There seem to be three different sizes. Uh, yeah, one millimeter, 1.5 millimeter, two millimeter color coded on the instructions on the website. So just follow that and uh, I'll be right back. So I just did the patch for the back. Um, I don't like the instructions for this uh, because they have the 80 layout right above the 90 layout. And halfway through, I realized I was doing the 80 layout, <laughs> but it, it was salvageable. Um, that's why it's a little funny. Uh, some of the pieces I put directly on the back plate. It was just easier to line up. And some of the pieces here, I just put on the PCB. Um, there's three different sizes. There's two millimeter, 1.5 millimeter, and one millimeter. Um, I guess it can be a little hard to differentiate the difference between 1.5 and one millimeter thermal pad. Um, so it's, it's nice if you pay attention because they're very similar. Um, they put, they asked to put pads in some places that don't make sense, like right here. I don't see why there needs to be pads here. Um, also this area right here, but it is what it is. Um, just going to put it back on now and pretty much it's good to go. Uh, it's a little hard to see from this angle for me. They're going to use a seven millimeter screws. Once again, screw them in at certain little bit at each spot. Oh. That screw, oh, okay. All right, let me uh, screw this in and come back because you can't really see from this angle. Got the back plate on, as you can see. Um, one quick note, uh, the instructions, well, this is a 90. It says over here to use two millimeters. I could not get this back plate on with the two millimeter pads. I actually replaced this one and this one with one millimeter. And the one I originally, this is the two millimeter pad. As you can tell, you can see the indent, right? In the back of the PCB. Now, this was excessively deep and it didn't look like it was gonna, the back plate was not, you know, meeting the PCB, like right here, you know, where you would screw it in. It was just not meeting. And I had a feeling it was those, those two on the side. I replaced them with one millimeter pads and there was still contact similar to the two millimeter pads. But after I replaced that, it was a little snug, but it did go on. Um, it didn't sit as nicely as I am used to. So I'm thinking that some of the pads on the back where they say 1.5, maybe should be one millimeter instead, um, especially the two millimeter. I, I think because ASUS has revised this PCB three times uh, that we know of, for the 3090, it is possible that things have changed. So when you put on the back plate, pay close attention. Um, if it's too hard to screw the screws in, don't force it, right? So there's some slight, slight bowing of the PCB, but I mean, I've never really had an EK block that sat perfect. <laughs> so this is not, not, not bad. Um, look is good, but other than that, I'm just gonna hook up the card now in the build that it's going to and we'll all see how it looks and how it performs main thing is how it performs okay well thank you for watching uh hopefully this has helped you install your water block i would definitely say pay attention to the back plate um, obviously you should get a back plate with uh, memory chips on the back so just don't force it down um i spoke to an ek rep about the back plate just now on Facebook Messenger. Um, so maybe it's just me, maybe I'm, this is, since this is a fairly late batch uh, 3090 for now, Strix, um, I got it recently. And 
you know, they pretty much go out of stock the moment they come in. So it could just be a recent revision problem. And uh, we'll see. Okay, well, thanks for watching.